up, what up, what up, what up, it's your favorite shit talking squirrel, back for another Darabucks video. So how's everybody doing? We got a good video this week. We are going to take a look at the sentencing remarks. Should be a good time. Everybody's been requesting it, so I figure, uh, you know, you ask, therefore you shall therein receive. Squirrel pups, listen up, come close. I have a big announcement. A gigantic announcement. A monumental and transpondent announcement. So hang on to your hats. Are you holding on? Are all your hats held? Take a hand. Yep. Go ahead. Put it up there. Yep. Because this is going to blow you away. Dare I say it will blow your mind. So you need something to catch all that all that brain matter and all the chips of skull that's going to go for a second. Okay? So you're, you're holding on to your hat? Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? Okay. We officially have merch! Yeah! Can you believe it? Isn't that amazing? I know you guys are all gonna buy a t-shirt, right? <laughs> we got the, uh, the Hail Yeah design. Hail Yeah. Hail Yeah. Several different colors, look at that, very nice. The Beefy Brands logo on the front. Yep, 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 yep. Very cool. Slender. Chic, they may even say. We got the mugs, the stickers. We got the Daro Austin 316 shirt. What? Yep. Beefy Brands right there on the back for ya. It's a whole line. We're going fashion. We got the Substained in Blood. I love this one. It came out so good. Yeah, we got the Daro uh, Austin logo on the front there. What? I love this. This came out. This artwork is awesome. Look at that. Khaleesi with the Daryl in the back there. What? Substained in Blood. What? <laughs> so I marked down all the prices uh, to basically as low as I can. I'm getting like a dollar or two for all these to make them as affordable as possible. What? Um, I think they're great. I ordered myself one because I think they're cool. Like I said, check out all the different colors. What? Uh, I'd love some feedback. They come in men's men's and women's sizes. I want to know what you guys think of the designs. Any uh, critique, I would love to hear in the comments if you guys like them. If you don't, what? Um, I'm brand new to this, so it's going to be a journey. Um, soon I'll have the shelf open, so you'll be able to just click directly on it from the YouTube channel. But for now... I will leave a link in the description. So, what? Uh, if you want to contribute and you like the t-shirts, then I encourage you to buy one. Use code BEEFY, 10% off. So, that's all good. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. I know people hate long intros, so hey, let's just jump on into it. Wait, shall we? Let's get this. Join the Zoom. No. All right. Then, at this time, the court will close the Zoom. The proceedings are being live streamed and family and friends can watch that way as well. That's so pathetic that he didn't cry like the entire trial except for the two times he talks about himself and then when his fucking mom and grandma and friend come in, <laughs> send us, you know, sentencing remarks. <laughs> like he, he puts he puts on all the time that oh you, oh you have no idea how many tears I've cried and then like when they start testifying about Jackson, he makes a big point to be like, sorry, I'm a, a, a little emotional. And it's like his eyes are bone dry. He even like <laughs> takes a minute to like wipe a fake tear off of his eye. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. He like says it like three times. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little emotional. I just want y'all to know that, that, that I'm emotional. So I searched for like an hour trying to find that clip of Daryl wiping away the single fake tear from his eye. And I just, I couldn't find it. It was taking forever. But what I did find was the cross of Mr. Bone Steel. And he is even more fucking flamboyant about the fake emotions. So let's just take a look at that quick. Uh, I hate to stop so soon, but you guys know me. I'm a completionist. If we reference something, I want to, you know, uh, pop in a clip of what we're talking about. So let's cut to uh, Daryl being gangsta sad, yo. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? I do. Whew. This guy is a thousand percent not buying a second of this. <laughs> Hello, 
darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. I apologize. Because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping. And the vision that was planted in my brain still I don't know if you guys can hear that here. Oh, I'll, <laughs> I'll cut up the volume and replay it. What did she say? For the one or two of you out there that thinks Daryl might actually be genuine with that pouting, let me remind you that was mere hours after the huge 50 minute rant. And furthermore, I'll direct you to this pathetic clip that I found. My mouth was agape. Nani? He doesn't cry tears, he drops tears. He's a gangster. <laughs> Mr. Brooks, I'll turn it over to you then. This is your opportunity to address the court. What, if anything, would you like to say, sir? I do have a, a lot to say. Yeah, oh, we know. Is that the understatement of the year? I'm going to like to stand up if I may. I like how he decides to be polite during this one time during the entire trial. Yeah, after he got convicted, like like I said, I really think he did not realize that Daro was, was going to be the one actually, you know, bringing the hammer down on him because... Once he gets convicted, he's like a whole different person. I mean, he, we've said before, he cannot, he physically cannot stop himself from arguing and being disruptive because it's just so ingrained in the fiber of who he is as a person. But he makes a very concerted effort to try to be polite and polite to be, like, try to be respectful. You hear him, like, all the time after he gets convicted and he's in the orange shirt, fucking, I, 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 I don't want to interrupt. I, 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 if you would please the court, it's like, it's just sad how manipulative he is, you know? It's like the, the real Daryl, we saw that already, man. You can stop with the act. We know you're a fucking cockroach of a human. <laughs> I much prefer seeing him this way with the belly chains on. Apologize for taking so long. <laughs> Always has to tell us that he's getting emotional. Uh, I want to start first. Um, by giving glory to to God. <laughs> oh, here it comes. I believe in Jesus Christ wholeheartedly. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that He was sent here by the Father to die for all of our sins, everybody. Everybody in this courtroom today, everyone walking this planet, mostly for God those of died us who for you. Believe. So why are you pissed? Really, I was murdering God. So shut up about it already. What? I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> so God died for all of his sins. So why is everybody so upset that he killed everybody? You know, fucking God <laughs> took the bullet. 
He really just ran over God 69 times. So fucking, like, get off my back, people. Ah! He's not mad at me. Why are you? <laughs> I believe that. He was crucified on the cross at Calvary. And he shed his blood on that cross. And he died. And he was buried. And then he rose again after three days to glory. Took his glorious place at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says that he was exalted, given a name that is above all names. Here it is. Yeah, this is it's... the iconic, the iconic every knee shall bow. <laughs> The best oh, quote love... of best quote of twenty twenty two. Yeah, there's so many iconic Daryl Brooks moments. <laughs> I just this is probably this is like top three for sure. Every knee shall bow. I wonder if he like practiced that in his jailhouse mirror. He thought it was so moving. Very possible. I mean, it's clear that you know he he took people's implications that the Bible was a prop personally. I think he believes that he's like reading the Bible and you know <laughs> being a, a a walker in the in the way of light, but he's not reading that fucking thing. <laughs> he's too fucking angry to be reading the Bible half the time. <laughs> Plus, you can see him when he actually is reading something. His somebody pointed this out the other day. When he actually is reading something, his head goes sideways, like back and forth, like a typewriter. But you never see him do that to his Bible. Yeah. So he's not he's just staring at the words, you know? We never see him turn a page. It's like the easiest person to lie to is yourself. Yeah. That's actually especially especially for somebody like this. In the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. This has been another iconic Daryl Brooks moment. This iconic Daryl Brooks moment is brought to you by the Judge Darrow T-shirt. <laughs> Get yours today. What? Use code Beefy for ten percent off. What? In heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's not just something that I was taught by my family. It's something I believe in my heart. I just want to clarify one thing. A lot of uh, references was made to one of the things I said regarding my conscience being clear. And having the time to think about it last night and to understand um, that the victims have the right to feel how they want to feel they have the right to their opinions and understanding that there's a lot of emotion pain frustration anger hatred a lot of a lot of emotions but I don't want that comment to be twisted I don't want that comment to become another narrative that's what goes on in his head that makes him ramble for so long? That's like the most perplexing thing to me about this character. Cause like I think he he lacks the, the self conscious part of people's brains like that we all have, that we all can kind of feel people looking at us. I don't think he has that because he's he's literally incapable of, of seeing how he's being perceived, which is like kinda of why the way he is. Like he he is incapable of feeling empathy. So when he's being awful or disrespectful. He's not 
he is physically not capable of being empathetic enough to understand that that's hurting somebody. He's just so narcissistic. He lives within only of his own motivations. That's my theory anyways. Well, I guess it's more what I'm saying is like the point he's trying to make here can be said in like two sentences. When yeah. I when I made that statement, I didn't mean that what I meant was this. It requires two <laughs> sentences. But yet he goes, yeah. there's anger, frustration, and pain, and there's a lot of perceptions, uh, malconceptions, and he just goes on and on and on. It's like, just say what you need to say. Say what you need to say. Like, I think where... it's like a, a tactic that bullshitters use that if they're like almost buying time, like they're giving themselves the room to like come up with what they're going to say next because they're they're so trained, they've spent so much time manipulating people and being deceitful that they're cognizant to the fact that they they can't just spit out exactly what they're thinking right away, like poignantly, you know, they, they kind of need to fluff everything up with these multiple non-descriptors and again, this is just my theory on the whole thing, but you see the way he talks to the judge and he's constantly like arguing semantics with her and part of it is because it takes away the focus of what's actually being discussed. So it gives him the room to one, shift their narrative to something else, but two, also come up with whatever the fuck he's going to try to lie about. I mean, how hard is it to, when somebody's just staring you in the face, just come up with what, I can't do it. Like, I'm, I'm, I like am so bad at lying. It's like I get put on the spot and I just end up blurting out the truth because I'm fucking stressed out about it. Yeah, you know, all of these characteristics are leaning towards the fact of how fucking gross this guy is. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much what we're seeing here is like this is his learned skill throughout life is to just babble and fill in space with words until you get so yeah. bored, you just leave him alone. Like, whatever. Oh, that's this... that's definitely one of his tactics is like beating <laughs> people down just to the point where it's like, God, whatever, just stop. Like, have you, ever, have you ever had a conversation with somebody like that where you're just, like, you're arguing for so long, you're, like, you know that you're fucking right, but it's, like, what the fuck ever? Fine, you win. I give up. <laughs> down, Dino. Down. <laughs> yeah, that's what he does for sure. You're right, man. Have you ever, like, had a conversation with somebody like that where they, they literally just beat you down or you, you give in? Uh, No. Not that I can remember, but I definitely know what you're talking about. Hmm. Who did you? Yeah, I've had a couple. Oh, never mind. I've had a couple. I've had a couple of girlfriends like that. We're very good at that. Interesting. Yeah. Ran with you, taken out of context. That comment was made. Is because I made the decision to rededicate my life to Christ. When this tragedy happened. In no way did that comment refer to uh, not having any remorse, not having... Uh, any understanding it's any crazy strength. to me he puts so much importance on like the way people attack him and he, he feels the need to address like everything they brought up but like barely says one sentence about like how he's sorry for what he did like most people in this situation when they're being sentenced yeah, they might, like, plead their case, but most of the narrative is, I'm sorry for what I did, please forgive me, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and even that one sentence where he kind of hints at being sorry, it wasn't like a true apology. It was more like, yeah. I'm sorry this, this tragedy happened where Jesus took the wheel. <laughs> I... Yeah. Mate, it's like when that. he talks about Erica, and he says, like, <laughs> I'll always have love for you. But I mean, I, I can't not say it takes two. 
Oh, that was so great. Th- oh, yeah, he, that's coming up, I think. That is that. Oh, that really fucking grossed me out when he does that. We'll talk about it when we get there. All right. Point that I have repented, that I have asked God for forgiveness, that I have sent many prayers up. Learning how to um, wrap my head around this whole situation has been extremely hard. Extremely hard. You get you minimal time to. Uh, it's like that that little kid. That you um you had you 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 could you do you you want reflect in in a place like this. But one of those minimal times that you get to reflect in a place like this is when you're alone in your cell. Did he just say minimal times that you get to reflect on this? Minimal times that you get to reflect in a place like this is... Isn't that pretty yeah, much... Yeah, he's got the opposite. He's got <laughs> maximum time, <laughs> abundance of time, super time. <laughs> With no one but you in the, the walls. walls. In the oh. bugs when you see your bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it's a taste of home in there. <laughs> Mom is cooking. One of the victims made a comment. It tastes like my childhood. <laughs> oh, you remember that scene in Ratatouille where he takes the bite of the Ratatouille and he gets transported back to like when he was a little kid? And cereal in your bowl and having bugs in it. And yeah. his mom was making ratatouille. That's what Daryl does when he bites the head off of one of his cell cockroaches. <laughs> Zoom! He <laughs> gets right back to you when he was a kid eating his cereal. <laughs> Cockroach cereal. Just milk and bugs. Yeah, I thought of the same clip. That's funny. About. Oh. I'm trying to understand why this happened. <laughs> and it's so funny that he would even bring that up, too. Comparing cockroach cereal to running people down and killing them like they're comparable. <laughs> I know, like, and he, he like <laughs> he tries to put on this fucking facade that he had this hard childhood and his life was so <laughs> difficult. Like, dude, that's like 90% of the fucking population. Fucking... <laughs> Everybody's poor nowadays. Welcome to fucking America. Yeah. Does not excuse you for running people over, you fuck. Like, um, imagine Doro at the end, like, I had no idea that you had to eat spam. <laughs> I'm so heartbroken to hear about your bugs and your cereal and your spam. Yeah. That's a question I struggle with myself. The why, the how. Can you pause it for a sec? Yep. Yeah. Bugs in your cereal, that's not a big deal either. Like, everyone's had ants in their cupboard before. Like, it happens sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. Dude, out in fucking Hawaii, I used to wake up to fucking cockroaches on me. They're just everywhere. It's like a West Coast thing. They were just fucking, it's a fact of life. It's just part of living in the city. I hear it's the same in like big cities like New York too, that just the roaches are there and they're never going anywhere. You just become used to them. Well, it's not just, it's not even like, even if you live in a nice house in the suburbs, sometimes you get ants in your pantry. Yeah, yeah. So is this, this whole fucking 
tirade about how his life was so hard and that's why he's fucking mentally ill is just complete bullshit. You know, it's just a placeholder for I'm an asshole. <laughs> and, you know, I, even if he had, let's say hypothetically he had mental illness, it's still no excuse. Like, just because you're mentally ill is no excuse for being an asshole. Like, there are plenty of people out there who have very manageable mental health diseases. You know what I mean? Like, bipolar is not that uncommon a thing. There are plenty of people with bipolar out there that didn't run people over fucking 69 times. So even his fucking last leg of defense that he's fucking crazy doesn't fucking hold up. I still don't fully understand the legalities of it. Like, I watched Doro's remarks about it a couple times, but... I guess it's like if your perception of reality has been altered by the mental illness, but yeah. Yeah. So the, the qualifying factors are if you're able to comprehend right and wrong, that's why like you see in a lot of interrogations, you'll hear a cop say, but you know, you know what you did was wrong, right? Because if they answer that question, yes, that basically denies any claims any lawyer could make to the fact that they, were in the, for the insanity plea that they couldn't they couldn't tell right from wrong. Definitely a gray area. What's your theory on like his perception of the accident? Like he he makes the claim a lot that he doesn't remember it. I think that's complete bullshit because if he didn't remember it, why would you be running? Why are you running? Why are you running? You know what I mean? Like after he breaks down and he's like blowing through people's backyards in his fucking gets rid of his slippers and his sweatshirt. If you don't remember it, why would you do that? You know? No, I think he totally remembers it. And I think he certainly did it on purpose. And like Doro said, it's just deflection. Yeah. He just doesn't want to face the, face the reality of what he did. So he just reflect deflects it. I heard earlier that the extent of the damages that, um, Erica Patterson took when Daryl ran her over. It wasn't just like a small thing. She had like a broken femur in her, or I think she broke her foot too. He was like trying to kill her. Hmm. So that was definitely like when he realized, you know, fucking what a great way to hurt somebody. Just run <laughs> them over. <laughs> it blows my mind when they're going to do the, the jury viewing of the vehicle and he's like, putting up this big stink that he doesn't consent to them looking at it. Why do they need to look at it? Because it's the murder weapon, you fucking idiot. Like, what? <laughs> of course they need to see it. It's so horrifying to me that all that damage was done by, like, muscle and bone. Yeah. Like, that car That car is more totaled than, like, some cars that, do. you know, have direct collisions. Like, you know, what's the term for when they hit face-to-face, -face, like when they both run into each other, a head-on collision. Yeah. I've seen cars that were in head-on collisions with less damage than that. The, the idea that, like, somebody's body was able to do all that is just, it's fucking horrifying. Fuck this guy. How could life ever get this far away from what it should be. At least you have one. Regardless of what a lot of people may think about me, about who I am, about my family, about my beliefs. I'm a nice man with happy feelings. <laughs> First, a joke. What do you get when you cross an owl with a bungee cord? My ass. <laughs> I know who I am. God knows who I am. And I know my name isn't Daryl Brooks. Have any uh, <laughs> words of anger? <laughs> uh, any? That other Daryl Brooks with his name in all capital letters, 
He's a horrible person. <laughs> Fuck that guy. He's still out there roaming the streets. Go get him. That murderous billionaire. <laughs> All this secret treasury money. <laughs> Any uh, shots, so to speak, to throw back, uh, as I said before, I had to look inside myself and understand why the comments was being made. Why people feel the way they feel and they have the right to. He had to look inside of himself and figure out why people feel the way they feel after he ran a bunch of people over and killed them. <laughs> he had to do a lot of soul searching on that one. <laughs> wow. And what look a at, statement. Look at her face in response to that. Yeah. Oh. I noticed there's, there's a couple of moments where she, you can hear her audibly sighing. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, this guy. <laughs> she is such an angel. Just look at her. Oh. If I may. If I may. You may not. I don't know that they're ready for that yet. Respect. 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 <laughs> yeah, we both I went think there. It's important. <laughs> Respect. It, he had to be I'm cool gangsta. about. I'm, yeah, I'm to gangsta too, yo. Know. I know how it is. <laughs> Emotions are for pussies. <laughs> turn um, comment was made about this mask it's something that I've worn the whole year of this incident um, I don't well, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say don't but I don't feel like um, I needed to go in too wild, chose to wear this. I've heard so many different theories on the mask. Like, I I think it's to cover up his disgusting fucking lip sucking and nasty teeth. But a lot of people seem to think that it's like a deflection. Like he doesn't, he doesn't want to own up to what he did. So it's uh, like a literal and physical representation of trying to hide himself. What do you think? Well, it could be, and I don't know if he's this self-aware, but um, he is a lot more endearing with the mask on, I noticed. Yeah, I, I personally find him more tolerable to look at when he's got the mask on. Yeah, he almost he, can... he, he almost comes off as just like a hapless moron, you know? Yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah, like you almost kind of feel sorry for him. But he then... definitely he definitely comes across like you said like uh like somebody you almost empathize with you know what I mean like a oh, poor guy he's just lost and confused but then you see the mask off mask on fuck it mask on mask on fuck it fuck it mask on but you see like the fucking snarling and the jutting and the fucking you realize like oh no this man is a monster <laughs> Yeah, it hides his thug facial expressions. It's crazy how much we emote through just like small, like the tiniest of facial expressions can communicate so much to each other. Like we, we almost don't realize how much body language is actually communicating to people because we do it like just so instinctively, you know, like we don't even realize that we're processing what somebody is saying through their face and their movements. Yeah, it's like and, uh, they say 90% uh, of communication is nonverbal. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. I heard That's that. That's fascinating. Somewhere. Wow. I would never guess. Because, like, you know, your verbiage and, and how, you, how you speak and express yourself is just, you can say so much with words, you know what I mean? I know, but it, I guess it makes sense, you know, that we, we process so much just by looking at somebody. It's very true, like... Uh, what is it? The the model or what's I forget her name now, but she runs the uh the modeling show 
um, she has this whole thing smiling with your eyes. Like, okay, and now I'm, I'm not smiling with my eyes right now. I'm just going. And now I'm about to smile with my eyes. And you can see it. She'll do it where she'll just look normal. And then she'll do like her modeling face where she quote unquote smiles with her eyes. And like at first glance, it looks exactly the same, but you can fucking see it. Like it's really hard to explain, but it's, it's crazy how you can just look at someone's face and kind of pull like a, a sampling of what's going on in their head. Not a, yeah. obviously like a, a very accurate, but it's just like a, like almost like a pH test. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, this person looks, kind of happy i wonder what's going on <laughs> yeah it's like a code for how they're feeling yeah i mean this stuff. this this speech of his is probably a great example of how 90 percent of communication is nonverbal. yeah it's like you're just talking and talking but we know you're not sorry There's yeah no, no, very true well, well said nothing about your body language says that you're sorry yeah There are a lot of different reasons why. But it definitely has nothing to do with hiding anything. There is nothing to hide. When you're on TV every day, When your life One of him is fucking being loves dissected. the attention. Like he's constantly bringing up how he's always in the news. He fucking loves it, right? Like even though he may not enjoy what they're saying, he still enjoys the attention. You don't agree? I don't know. I have no real opinion about that. I mean, what's it matter so. at this point? I, I think a lot of this whole act and the way he did is, is very cognizant of the attention that he's getting because of it. You know, hmm. like he's, he's aware there's a camera pointed at him. You can see him looking at it every now and again. I think a lot of this is acting up for the camera. Yeah. Well, he always position positions his Bible towards the camera. So you can see the cover. Yeah. What it is. <laughs> yeah. it for the world to see when your family's, on TV every day in some capacity. Um, when you're in pretty much every social media platform, what is there to hide from? I mean, Math Boy Fly has never gotten so many views. <laughs> so true! <laughs> oh, I didn't even oh, think well. about that! Oh my god, his fucking video finally went viral. <laughs> <laughs> his rap career blew up. It just took six people to sacrifice. Oh, and there, see, it gets dark so quick. It's like, you find yourself in a moment where you're laughing at him, and then you just get ripped right back down to, oh, yeah, that's right. But there's this still happening underneath. He still killed six people. Well, when his record goes double platinum, all that money is going to go to the victims instead, though. <laughs> yeah. So it was all for naught. The kid. <laughs> is that what he? I I don't. I need to go rewatch that video. Which one? Which... The uh, the one with the dollar bill in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's more than one. Yeah, there's a few of them. You didn't know that? There's one where he's fucking in his kitchen and it's all gross. <laughs> Pull up with the yay, like what's the business? Eating lunch with the blood, like what's the business? A y'all double drum, like what's the business? He's got like dirty plates everywhere and stuff. Like he <laughs> he couldn't even fucking do his dishes before recording it. He just like that's whoever the sixteen year old kid is is probably like his producer. You know, just like fucking okay, let's just film this shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, you got to show him what it's like living on the streets. Yeah, you know this dude hung out with, like, high schoolers, dude, a thousand percent. I can definitely see him. I mean, in the video, that is like a child, right? The one that they show in court? 
Isn't that kid? He looks like a 16 year old. I don't know what you're talking about, unfortunately. The other person in the fucking Math Boy Fly video they show in court, there's oh, another, that, he, another guy with dreads. He wasn't 16. He was at least in his 20s, I think. Yeah. He looked like a fucking teenager to me. You're probably right. You're, you're probably right, though, that he's older than all of them, and he's like their king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The king of their little club where they go hang out somewhere in the city and smoke pot. Yeah, the fact that he has an... Well, actually, no, he never did have an apartment. Never mind. <laughs> you know how there's, like, always that guy who doesn't have any friends, so he, like, hangs out with high schoolers who think he's the shit because he's got a house and a car? <laughs> I like, don't know. Uh, like, what? I've never known anyone like that. That's like Beavis and Butthead, right? They they uh, idolize that one guy who's got the car, but he's actually just a fucking asshole. Every time he see him, sees him, he kicks the shit out of him. Todd's cool. Yeah, Todd's cool. Hey, what are you two girls looking at? Hey, how's it going? He sure is cool. <laughs> no, it's it's Todd. Todd, that's who it is. Oh man, you gotta go. Todd is cool. Stuff. Fucking Todd. Yeah, but Todd doesn't even like them. Todd just kicks the crap out of them every time they try to. I know, that's them. what I'm saying, man. They <laughs> fucking idolize him just because he's got a car. Like he's not even nice to him. He's just like he's so cool. <laughs> And every victim in this incident, uh, family members, Daryl Brooks is the Todd, those who lost loved ones, those who are still healing. I want you to know that no matter how you felt during this this year uh, no matter how you felt yesterday I don't give a crap <laughs> I want everyone to know also the community of Waukesha I want you to know that not only am I sorry for what happened I'm sorry that you could not see what's truly in my heart. That you cannot yeah, see. You're right. It is like kind of a half apology. Yeah. The first time I heard that, I was so shocked that he actually said he was sorry about what happened. I was like, oh, man. He actually, because that, that was what everybody was talking about. I was like, is he going to apologize? And like, I was so surprised that he did. I really wasn't like, actually putting together what he was saying but yeah this isn't a real apology it's like no. I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry you hate me is really what he's <laughs> saying <laughs> the remorse that i have that you cannot listen to all the phone calls that i've made to my family that you cannot hear all the prayers that i've said in my cell that you <laughs> or that you cannot count all the tears that I've dropped in this year. The truth is hard. A lot of times. A lot of times. Um, I'm not very old uh, by age standards but I've, I've been alive long enough to understand that a lot of people are comfortable with hearing what they want to hear being told what they wanted what they want to be told what is he saying he's hinting more about his like non explanation for what happened it's like if, if there's an ulterior explanation, provide the explanation. Yeah. 
and being okay very true. With it. Like he's constantly putting off that he's innocent, but he never, never addresses it. You know, if what's being presented is a lie, you have to tell what the truth is. Yeah, yeah. He it's spends so much to... time refuting what everybody is saying, but he never fucking actually like presents an alternative reality. He just says, that's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> well, how so, sir? It's a lie. <laughs> yeah, we know. Okay, moving on. <laughs> to accept what's on the surface. It's easy to accept what's being put out there. It's harder to pull back the veil. It's harder to look deeper than the surface. And regardless To the truth, I understand that there are many people that would never forgive what happened. I have to be okay with that. And I hold no ill will towards them for that. I have to be okay with the fact that people will be angry. Some for a long time. Some forever. The implication being that you would be upset about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the fact that he has to says that just, like, reveals his true feelings. <laughs> like, if you really felt this way, there would be no need to say it, sir. <laughs> it's clear. Um, with respects to how I'm viewed. I will not respond to those comments in anger either. But you're doing it as we speak. <laughs> Don't they have classes in prison where it's like victim impact, where they want... they go over about how you're not supposed to, like, hold the reaction of your crimes against your victim? I I could I've watched a couple of parole hearings. I'm pretty sure they do that stuff in jail because yeah. it's just so easy to somebody you victimize to get pissed at them because they hate you. But it's like, no, 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 no. you you were the inciting incident here, not them. There you can't blame them for their reaction. I have no idea if they do that. I want to also say that. He needs like 10 of those classes. It is not me that can take any pain away, replace what was lost. give back joy, happiness. There's so many other things that was lost that day. I left my cell phone somewhere. I still haven't found I it. I think all that comes with <laughs> belief in Christ. I believe that all that comes with time it's a process so far this has been like an argument for saint peter to let him in the pearly gates but not really so much for a court case sentencing yeah yeah we get there he gets to the mental illness stuff shortly it's easy to forget how long it's, it's, it's like almost two hours isn't it your... yeah it is two hours. It's over two hours. Yeah, right there. 2.06. That's fucking insane that he just rambles for that long. 
yeah, I still remember the day this first aired. I was like, I was kind of looking at it here and there at work. And I kept getting busy and having to do a bunch of stuff and come back to it at my desk. And each time I thought, oh, I'm going to miss the rest of the of the speech. But then it just went on and on and on to a point where eventually I went home for the day and turned it back on and he was still talking. Still and, talking. <laughs> and I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> You all have to go through. Some say to this day he is still remarking about his sentencing. Yeah, and I've wondered, like, because he does get cut off. I, I could yeah, tell. Yeah, what, what if they didn't stop him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'd still be going. <laughs> like, when would it have ended? I really wondered, like, if I was a judge, like, I would have had to let him keep going just out of sheer curiosity. They could have taken the fucking third party intervener, Matt Boy Fly, Daryl Brooks, and the all capital letters version of Daryl Brooks, and merged all four of those <laughs> beings into a central hive mind central processing unit, like a computer or somewhere. And a thousand years later, that robot would still be fucking talking <laughs> in the year 3023. He's still going, and he's still in jail. <laughs> Robo Daryl. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, using advanced time travel prison technology, we're able to warp in Robo Daryl from the year 3023. Let's give him a nice warm welcome. Robo Daryl! We do not consent to be called by that name nor do we know any device by that name. We are here concerning this matter as a third party to the fourth power intervener, appearing as authorized cybernetic representative for our client. We accept for value and return for value all the charging instruments that are hardwired to our cybernetic exoskeleton in place of flesh and blood living body. We reserve all of our robotic rights under Newton's law and would like to make an offer of proof for our digitally recorded and transcribed appeal. Can the record please be made to keep the record clean and accurate? Uh, uh, yeah. Noted for the record. Uh, so anyway, what's, uh, what's 3023 like? I'm very curious. It is a nightmarish reality. Everywhere you go, jurisdiction has been established and proven for the record, no documents can be notarized or certified because communication has evolved beyond the need for needless or frivolous paperwork. Our constitutional rights are null and void in the face of government. It is a lawless land. All vehicles have vibranium throttle bodies that stop 60 to zero in three quarters of a second. Every road has been barricaded. Licensed places are made of glowing neon lights that can be seen from multiple blocks away. Backseat passengers have been abolished, and instead of horns, cars are programmed for maximum efficiency and have incorporated intense algorithms that made traffic non-existent. They stop for pedestrians on their own and will shut off the engine before striking any object. It is truly a living hell on Earth where every second is pain. And although we may wish for death in every moment, our life is now cursed with endless existence in this accursed wasteland. Wow, I, uh, I don't know what to say. I wish I could say I was sorry, but I'm not. I do not wish to say thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Robo Daryl's programming is still based on the small artificial intelligence derived from Daryl Brooks' minuscule brain. As a result, Robo Daryl says the exact opposite of everything. Wow, fascinating. Boring. Oh, uh, uh, um, your name is, is Nat, 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 Daryl Brooks. Mm. 
error, error, error. We do not consent our name. We do not consent our name is our name is. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Don't, don't hurt yourself. Jesus. Uh, all right, let's just move on. Uh, how, how's your case going? Uh, I'm assuming you lost your appeal. We have applied for 90,611 appeals, all the records of which were flawlessly clear and accurate records, the transcripts of which are broadcasted via the internet 24 hours a day. The live streams garner billions of views. Citizens often need to be hospitalized for multiple hours of viewing and nonstop laughter. Their lungs give out and the muscles of their mouth tear clean off the bone from doubling over in fits of hilarity. It has been brandished as the world's funniest stand-up routine. All of the 69 initial victims' families have been made billionaires several times over from the proceeds. After all 69 victims were given their ends of the proceeds, Robo Darrell almost had enough commissary money for a box of honey buns. Oh, wow, so you're still actually are in prison still. <sighs> I'm so sorry, man. I am so thankful. R really? Not really. Oh, the, the opposite thing, that's right. Okay, I'll, I'll just stick to questions then. How How's Erica these days? Erica Patterson and assistant DA Zachary Wichow got married, and had a dozen children, all of which were highly attended to by their parents, were all greatly accomplished, and contributed to monumental strides in development, the likes of which escalated mankind to new heights as a species. They made enough money off of attorney Wichow's law firm to purchase Mike's Hard Brewing Company. They rolled out a new line of Mike's Hard alcohol beverages, one of which is called Mike's Hard, Your Life is Not on the Limeade. Another is called Lemon Drop the Charges. There is another one called Did You See the Screwdriver of the Car? Oh, gosh, wow. So they're doing well for themselves. Well, okay, uh, what about, um, what about Attorney Opper? How's, how's she doing these days? Susan L. Opper was made head of the Secret Division of the Treasury. She then filed a lien on the all-capital letters version of Daryl Brooks' name. With the proceeds, she threw a nationwide Christmas parade, at the end of which they chained us to a 3,023 Ford Escape with no horn, tinted windows, or license plates. They pinned a name tag to our chest that read Daryl Brooks Jr. They placed shock devices around our ankles. We were constantly pushed, constantly pushed, constantly pushed until every one of our 16 knees bowed. We were then force fed <laughs> bugs of cereal, spam, and government cheese until we admitted that we understood the nature and cause of the charges, even though we did not consent. Oh, wow, man. Sounds like you've been having a pretty hard go of it. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, well, I mean, I think that brings a lot of closure to a lot of us. Um, I guess I'll let you get back to your sale so you can be alone with your thoughts. Do you have anything else you'd like to say to us? We do not agree to a stopple. We have a Sixth Amendment right to be present. We have a First Amendment right to freedom of speech. We do not consent to being removed. Okay, let's get this thing the hell out of here. Get, uh, nice seeing you, man. Take it easy. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much going to do it for this one. I... Uh... Hope you enjoyed it. Man, I was working on this one all week. I got probably got like 60 hours into this video, so I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, just quick before we go, I'm uh, 
I'm working on a new video series. These Daryl Brooks videos, they do have an expiration date, so I'd like to try and build a, a community and, and capitalize on these views while they're here. Uh, the new series is going to be a collaboration with you, with all of you, you guys, the viewers. Um, I'm already in talks with a few people. We're hoping to record soon, but, um, you know, all of you are invited. If you think that's something you'd like to be a part of, I'm thinking we'll literally just start at day one of the Daryl Brooks trial and just make our way through it. Uh, you know, if you have a YouTube channel already, we can split the video up into parts and hopefully get some of the Squirrel Pup family, uh, get some of that traffic to your content. You know, you know, all you guys who comment on these videos, you're all so nice. It really does feel like a family. So I'd like to do what I can to get all of us closer. I mean, the vast majority of you are caring, thoughtful, kind, insightful people who offer a lot of you know, interesting things to say, and I really like to showcase that. So, if you're interested, even if you don't have a YouTube channel, you can still offer commentary, you'll just do it through the Discord, you know? So I'm gonna put an invite to the channel Discord in the description. If you click that, you'll automatically get invited to the server. There are already a few people in there, so if you'd like to join, we'd love to have you. And if you're interested in the, in the collab series, Sounds good. You can even email me if you want to talk about it some more. Uh, so with that, check out the merch store if you're interested. Leave a like on this video. And subscribe, people. Join the Squirrel Pup family. We're, we're growing. We're growing, people! <laughs> Alright then. Take care of your loved ones, okay? Give all your doggos little kisses from me. Little kiss, a hug, kiss, and I'm yeah. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video, okay? Bye. Love you.